What is up everybody, welcome back. Today we are looking at how to work out the nth term of a linear sequence. Let's jump into it. Okay, but first, what is a linear sequence? Well, a linear sequence is any sequence of numbers where the gap or the jump between each of the numbers is consistent. So if we look at this first example very quickly, we can see that the gap between two and five is three, the gap between five and eight is three, 8 and 11 is 3, etc, etc. And therefore, if a linear sequence was plotted onto a graph like this, and these were our terms, so this was the first number, the second, third, fourth, our sequence of numbers would end up being a straight line, a linear line. Now, the gap between the numbers can change. It can be 3, it can be 10, it can be a million, it can be minus a million, but all linear sequences will have the same gap between each of the numbers. And what does finding the nth term of a linear sequence mean? Well, we can use the sequence to work out the next few numbers. So for example, I know that if the gap between the numbers is three, this next number on this green row will be 17 because I can just add three to 14, which will be 17. I could add another three, which will be 20. But what if I wanted to find out what the 50th term of this sequence was? Well, I need a formula and that's what we're gonna look at today. So my first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the jump value, the value of the difference between the numbers in our sequence. Then we're going to multiply it by the term and we're going to understand what that means. And then we're going to find the correction. So that probably doesn't mean too much to you at the moment. But that's all right. That's what we're going to look at here today. OK, let's have a look at what I mean with question one. And let's look at step one, finding the jump value. OK, so as we said before, the gap between two and five is three, five and eight is three. 8 and 11 is 3, etc, etc. So my jump value for this sequence is 3. And then it says to multiply with the term. So this will be my first term, my second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the one we're trying to find is sixth. And we call these numbers up here the terms. And it just means the number in the sequence. Now if we think about it, if we're going up in threes, then it's a bit like the three times table. So if I multiply my three by my term, these numbers here in the blue line, then I'm gonna get somewhere close to the sequence value. So to show that I can write three and I'm gonna have N for my algebraic letter, choosing N like number. Okay, but like I say, that's gonna be close to our number, but not bang on. So then we need to find the correction. Let's see what I mean there. So we know that the next number after 14 will be 17. But so far, all I've got in my formula is 3n, so 3 times the number value, which is 6. If I do 3 times 6, I get 18. 18 is very close to 17, but not quite right. So I need to correct my formula. How can I get from 18 down to 17? Well, I can minus 1. So therefore, my formula for this sequence is 3n minus 1. 3 times the position of the number I'm looking for, minus 1 to correct. Let's check that with one of the other numbers we know. Let's pick this column here, the 4. Okay, and let's use our formula to see if it works. So the first thing's first, write the formula, 3n minus 1. Now I can replace my n with the number 4, because that's the number that we're wanting. So there will be 3 times 4 minus 1. Use my bod mass knowledge to understand I have to do the multiplication first. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 1, and 12 minus 1 is 11, and that is the number in the sequence. So it works. So I could use this formula to work out any number in this sequence. Let's look at a harder one. So the first thing I need to do again is find the jump value. So I can see this time the gap is 10. Next, what I can do is finish off my table by putting the numbers of the terms on the top. And then to start my formula, I will write 10n, remembering that this n just means the position of the term, the number of the term that we're looking for. So then we can do step three, which is to find the correction. And to find the correction, we're gonna use an example, one that we've got, let's use this three. So 10 times three equals 30. Well, 30 is close to the 22 that I'm looking for, but not right. So how can I correct from 30 down to 22? I would need to minus eight. So therefore my formula should be 10n minus eight. 
Let's check it with another one that we've got. Let's check it against the fifth term. So let's start by writing our formula, 10n minus eight. And this time we're gonna be looking for the fifth term. So it's 10 times five minus eight. Bod mass tells me to do the multiplication first. 10 times five is 50, minus eight is 42, which is the correct number. And again, I can use this formula for any number now in this sequence. Okay, let's have a look at a really challenging one. So first thing we're gonna do is find our jump value again. So what's the difference between 11 and five? Well, it's five, but it's not just five, it's negative five, because we're now descending our numbers. What's the difference between six and one? Also negative five. One and minus four, negative five. Minus four, minus nine, also negative five. So the start of my formula this time is gonna be negative five n. Okay, then we're gonna multiply with the term and find the correction. So let's look at an example with one we've got, but first let's put our term values on the top, our numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And we could just pick any example. Let's pick number four, the fourth term, negative five times four. Well, negative five times four becomes negative 20. Okay, so we're close to our negative four target, but not quite. So how can we get from negative 20 to negative four? Well, we would need to plus 16. So it's a little bit confusing because we're in negative numbers. So we have to understand which way around on our number line we're gonna start going. If we're at negative 20 and we want to get to negative four, we actually have to come back up the number line positively. So we plus 16. So my formula would be negative five N plus 16. Let's see if this formula works with one more in our examples. Let's have a look at the second term. So starting again with my formula, negative five N plus 16. So negative five, replace the N with my term, which is two. Negative five times two. Well, negative five times two is negative 10 plus 16. Again, bod mass says do multiplication first. And negative five times two is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 16 equals six. The right answer. So it does work with negative numbers too, and it does work if we're descending our numbers. But we have to be a bit sharper to notice that the start of our formula therefore would be a negative, and we need to be aware of what happens when we multiply a negative and add to a negative. And there you go, that is everything you need to know about finding the nth term to a linear sequence. Let's look at things to remember. First, find the difference between your numbers in your sequence, whether that's positive numbers or negative numbers if we're coming backwards. Multiply your difference by your nth term and then see how close you are and find the correction by adding or minusing a number to it. And then finally write your formula. And just check your formula works before you move on just to make sure you've not made any mistakes. Okay, here are three for you to work at. Have a go at solving these yourself. Press pause on the video, take your time and put your answers into the comment section. I would like you to write the formulas for each of these. And there you have it guys. Hopefully this video has been useful. If it has, subscribe to the channel, like this video and I'm gonna see you in another video. But for now, peace out.